Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here on this Thursday. Let's talk some mountain weather. My first stop, a glorious Rocky Mountain National Park. This is the view from the uh, the Alpine Visitor Center up there uh, above Treeline. And I mean, it is a spectacular day in Colorado. I was out earlier this morning uh, for a trail run. So nice. And we have these crisp mornings as well. And But look at the snow up here on some of the, uh, the higher peaks uh, some of the ridge lines there above tree line and we're starting to see this much more consistently in general across the west now especially here in Colorado uh, when we get these afternoon storms which are still bubbling up and we're starting to see more frequent cold fronts but they're all delivering rain sleet snow hail um, the whole the whole gamut now um, it feels like almost every single afternoon so um, just a great view up there. Let me show you the view on radar across the West. So for most of the West, there's nothing going on. But down here, look at this precipitation starting to sneak in there from Southern California. I talked about this yesterday. This is uh, some, rim look at this radar image. This is remnant tropical moisture. There was a tropical system that moved up from the South and I mean, you can you can kind of see the rotation. This is the area of low pressure with all the precipitation rotating around this area of low pressure and like this. So it's remnant tropical moisture. I mean, that's why there's so much here. Typically, you just wouldn't see this um, in the fall season for sure. But I mean, look at some of these these oranges and reds showing up, these thunderstorms, um, heavy rain potential. So it's all going to the north and will ride the coastline there of California over the next couple of days. Um, and so it has played out, you know, I mentioned that uh, that possibility um, yesterday. Um, here is uh, water vapor satellite imagery across the west in the Pacific here. So the whites and the blues are going to be your moisture a lot. That's where the action is, and that's where our area <clears throat> of low pressure is right now. And, and the movement, again, is going to be up the coast. So that's kind of its own entity because it is completely surrounded by dry air. Look at all the oranges and reds here around that area of low pressure. <clears throat> got oranges and reds here across the inner mountain west as well. A little pocket of drier air right here. Um, the other key features, you can almost see the spin here. Area of low pressure exiting um, out into the plains. And then the next area of low pressure right here, dip in the jet stream, that's where most of the energy is going to be rolling to. And that's up in BC um, and a lot of the northern tier uh, in the forecast. But there are some very interesting kinks in the forecast flow, which I'm going to show you here. Um, let's just start with this. Um, this is the uh, the forecast for atmospheric pressure anomalies up in the middle of the atmosphere at about 18,000 feet. So this is today, Thursday, 918. So when you see these areas of blue, those are lower than normal pressures. So that's a low pressure right there. That's the one that's moving away from the Rockies out into the plains. The other key feature is that uh, remnant tropical moisture, which is right here. You can see the blues. And again, that's its own entity. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. You can almost see like a little bit of a pressure drop up here in the parts of British Columbia. Now, I'm going to take you to Tuesday, 923. Now, I want to preface this by saying this is, the, this is an AI-run model, AI out of Europe, uh, the European model, but it's AI-based. So um, uh, we'll start to uh, break into this AI world a little bit more as we roll into ski season and talk a little bit more about mountain forecasts and all that stuff. But I think sometimes they're valuable. And what this is showing here is, and this is valid on Tuesday, 923, early in the morning. But look at this. This is fascinating right here. So this actually came out of the northern Rockies and is sliding down the eastern side of the Rockies. So there's an area of low pressure that will likely on Monday, Monday afternoon, Monday night, brush Wyoming and potentially even the mountains of Colorado as that rolls through. And then that would continue down in this direction um, during the day on Tuesday. And look over here. Yeah, that's, that's possibly another remnant area of tropical moisture that might brush California. So that could be number two. That could be number two. All right, again, that's Tuesday, 923. This is another AI forecast, same thing, middle of the atmosphere. But now this is effect in effect for Tuesday, 930. Um, and look what it's uh, forecasting here. 
Look at this, another tropical system. There's one near Cancun. Now up here, big drop in pressures. If this plays out, that, uh, that's gonna be cold airs uh, knifing in there with a big area of low pressure, probably a couple of them in a very strong jet stream. But again, this is AI's interpretation of this. So it's looking at history and it's saying, okay, have we seen this before? And it's looking at these, these boxes and it's checking these boxes and it's saying, when I see this type of a pattern, this is typically what to expect next. And that's what's happening there. Um, pretty interesting. Now, how does that all fit together? Here are my bullet points this morning. So talked about the California tropical moisture. That's pretty interesting. And again, there may be one more coming in the, down the road in the forecast. Um, there's that fast moving low that comes down the eastern side of the Rockies between Sunday, Monday into Tuesday morning. Oh, and I forgot this, fall starts on Monday. The official start of fall is on Monday, the calendar start. Um, now look at the snow chances for the highest peaks here across the West. I give you the dates, I won't go through all these, but uh, for example, on Utah, you have a chance of some snow over the very highest peaks, 920, 921, and then 925, 926, and then later in the month, um, 928, 29. That's the kind of thing I'm really seeing is I do think, especially if the AI version of the forecast is correct, it is going to be turning more active across the West later in September and during the early, the first week there of October. So we'll see if that plays out. BC, you do have some snow coming 921, 25, and 29. Um, so let me show you what that looks like in the 10-day snow forecast. Now, <clears throat> this is also um, an AI uh, interpretation for 10-day snowfall, just so you know. Uh, there's a little bit here indicated in Colorado, in Wyoming, and there's also a fair amount up here in the parts of BC, Alberta. Look at the coastal range all lit up in those pinks. That's over six inches and a touch right there for the, uh, for the, for the Sierra. So uh, with this type of pattern, definitely favors the northern tier, but at times you're going to see this type of flow pattern with areas of low pressure or fast moving cold fronts kind of ride down the eastern side of the Rockies like we're going to see potentially coming up Sunday, Monday into early Tuesday. Um, let me dig in just a little bit. So this is Berthoud Pass in Colorado. This uh, forecast for snowfall goes all the way out to October 3rd. So you can see there's a little bit of a surge here, 20, 21, 22, 23. Another little surge right here, 26, 27, 28, and then maybe another surge right here early in October. So there's two or three different um, potential little snows here for Berthoud Pass, and this generates about four or five inches there over Berthoud Pass. And Berthoud Pass is in Colorado, Central Mountains near Winter Park. It's a higher pass at about 12,000 feet. Let me uh, show you the, the jet stream forecast, and this will really put it all together. Now on these maps, I'm gonna start it at lunchtime here today, Thursday, September 18th. You can see this little bit of wind energy, that's jet stream energy, so this is effective up at about 30,000 feet in the atmosphere. The color contours represent wind speeds at that level, and so these are, you know, they correspond to these numbers in knots, and that's what, 40, 50 mile an hour jet. So that's at lunchtime today. Um, let me uh, let me push this ahead in time. Here we are Friday at lunchtime. Here we are Saturday at lunchtime. Here we are Sunday at lunchtime. I want to point out a couple of things here. Um, so you've got some jet energy coming in from the south, and this is potentially when it's arcing to the north, it opens the door, and there might be a little bit of that remnant tropical moisture there. Um, the other issue is this powerful northern branch crashing in here. Look at the dip in the jet. There's a big area of low pressure. Now, this is the one that will likely slide down the eastern side of the Rockies. Watch as I push this ahead in time. Here we are lunchtime on Monday, September 22nd, and look what it does. It's right here, right there where we were talking about in the forecast with the pressures, um, and I was showing you that, and now we're looking at um, the jet stream energy for this, I mean, you're, what is that, 80, 90, 100 mile an hour winds with that, a quick little shot of snow potentially for some of the highest peaks as that rolls through. Again, that's on Monday at lunchtime. Here we are on Tuesday at lunchtime, and there's, there's our area of low pressure. 
just a little bit left with this. A little dip in the jet, but it's going to be carrying it away from Colorado at that point. And look over here, remnant tropical moisture sitting right there across California. Main jet's way up here to the north. So these two areas of low pressure are cut off from the flow. All right, here we are lunchtime on Wednesday. Oh, that's interesting. Look at this model. It brings in that little area of low pressure right there on Wednesday. Um, okay, let's go with uh, Thursday at lunchtime. One more. And notice what happens. That area of low pressure and a little bit of that jet energy slides into the Rockies. But look what's happening to the north. That jet stream buckles to the south, area of low pressure. Uh, that could mean some snow for BC, Pacific Northwest. Here we are lunchtime. Oh, this is a powerful jet. This is lunchtime on Friday, September 26th. Look at the northern branch. Just knifing in. Cooler air up here, potentially snow right along that over the northern tier. That'll be an interesting setup. And like I've been saying, once we get towards the end of the month, early October, I think this is the kind of pattern we're going to see where it's just more active in general across the west, the Pacific Northwest, the northern tier, northern Rockies, all of those areas. So that'll be very interesting to see how all that, uh, that plays out. Okay, let me end on the 10-day uh, the snow forecast. Again, you can see not a lot for the lower 48, but some up there in BC for sure. But nonetheless, we have um, two or three different storm systems to watch over the next 10 days. Guys, thanks for tuning in here. Always appreciate it. Take care and have a great day.